Back in 2012, I launched Far Cry 3 for the first time on my Xbox 360 and thought it was the greatest looking game ever made and ever will be made. Now it looks a little bit like the original Crisis. Being about 18 years old, you'd think it'd be easy to run, but that's just not how Ubisoft functions. Instead, when I booted the game for the first time, ran about 45 FPS and started like hell. To save you from having to deal with the same fate, I'll have a pinned comment with the information on how to fix it. Now that the game actually runs at a decent frame rate and all the stuttering is gone, you can actually play the game. To get the proper stalker experience, you're going to need to do two things. First, install Ziggy's mod. There are other mods out there, but you don't need them. Far Cry 3 still looks pretty good today, and there's no real reason to make your PC start to tear up over it. Ziggy's mod changes... Ev everything? The other thing you'll need to do is to set your game to the Russian dub. Having now played through the entire game with it, it's actually pretty well voice acted all around. Uh, I, I don't know if this is the best time. Sam is probably the best character in the game, and he's just a treat in the Russian dub. Мне надоело. Я выхожу. Уже? Ты хочешь продолжить, Карл? Может нам поднять ставки? Нет, нет, Сэм. Это я так. Good. And believe me, I was not prepared to hear Russian in combat. All of this footage is on the hardest difficulty of Ziggy's mod, but even in its normal difficulty, it limits you in a lot of ways that I really enjoyed. Guns must be reloaded manually, and there's no indication for how many bullets are left in the magazine. <laughs> Enemies can only be marked with the camera. You die exceptionally fast. There are no interact prompts for anything. Guns and attachments are now sold with realistic prices. Radio towers no longer give you free guns. All weapons in the game have been rebalanced. Enemies no longer look like red shirts from Star Trek and actually put on some tactical camouflage. Animals die significantly faster and no longer require an entire military industrial complex to take down. My favorite change is that the skill tree is totally unlocked from the start, which means that you could just get jungle run an hour into the game instead of 20. Thank God. Far Cry, especially 3, has always had this development of the player from a weak, timid coward to becoming a bloodthirsty Rambo by the end. There's nothing wrong with this, and it's definitely the tone of the game, but Ziggy's mod definitely leans towards you being a timid coward more, which I personally liked a lot. Early on, you feel like a twig with a knife, and it's really thrilling and enjoyable. The changes lead to situations that would have pretty much never happened in the vanilla game. Like here, where I heard fighting over the hill, went to investigate, and found enemy and allied AI battling it out, and chose to stay out of it because I would have gotten Swiss cheesed if I didn't. The enemies were actually genuinely a threat, and that felt awesome. Even later on, you see something like this and you're just like, alright, I'm outta here. The tactic I adopted throughout my entire playthrough, but especially early on, is ambushing the random patrols around the map. Sitting in a bush and gunning everyone down works almost all of the time, and the increased lethality across the board makes it really effective and feels awesome. Ziggy's mod makes these a lot more frequent, which makes it more risky and thus more exciting. Enemies actually dying to being shot is a pretty exceptional for the combat flow, would you know? And I don't really think the mod would work without it. You know what's not exceptional for the combat flow? The fact that you have to loot everyone you kill because everything costs an arm and a leg. Ziggy's mod changes the loot animation to be faster than vanilla, and it still takes years off your life. I ended up grabbing the perk that makes you loot people on takedowns and trying to get as many as possible to lessen the extremely boring paste-destroying loot process. Also, whoever decided to make the loot and swap weapon button the same needs to go to hell. But at least the guns on the floor still shoot. I'll come back to how money is balanced later, but I gotta, I gotta get this for Troy.
enemies not being able to be marked anymore is a change that I really didn't like at first, and then I realized it's one of the best additions the mod adds to the game. The camera, which you'd think would be completely pointless after this change, still found really ample use as a pocket scope. Additionally, the change makes you have to be pretty keenly aware of your surroundings, and the audio design combined with enemy indicators always made it feel fair. I never felt like I was killed by someone who I had just, like, no idea where they were. Apart from maybe this time where I was just, like, straight up shot through a wall. This, um, happens with heavies on the second island for some reason. Ziggy's mod also makes it occasionally rain, and the change is ab abrupt. <laughs> The weapon rebalancing is cool, but LMGs specifically have some problems. You hose down an entire outpost, and then after the cutscene you just sort of stand there for like five minutes waiting for your gun to reload. You also go at the speed of a snail with it out, and if you accidentally tap the button to swap to it, good luck getting anywhere. Ammo scarcity was also weird. Early on I found it to be a really big problem. Even during the Skrillex flamethrower mission, I literally expended every single round of ammunition and having to resort to stealth flamethrower attacks. Then, after you get to the second island, every single privateer drops at least a magazine of ammo, making managing it completely trivial. Remember how I touched on the game's performance earlier and how you need to fix it? Well, it still breaks on modern systems. After a takedown, there's a good 20% chance a body will try to ascend to heaven. One time it even managed to get me killed. The game works pretty well for the most part, but I expect things to break. And some things look really jank. Hmm. 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 Far Cry's progression has always been kind of out of whack, and in Ziggy's mod especially, I'm convinced that money is a complete trap. I genuinely don't know if this is an oversight or intentional design decision, but with the weapons costing more than Amazon to purchase, you'd think actually buying them would be a massive power spike, but... no. Picking up guns off the floor means you get access to some of the most expensive weapons in the game at absolutely no cost, and some even come with attachments. All you'd ever really want to buy is a sniper with a suppressor on it, and that's it. I didn't even bother doing that in this playthrough. Halfway through the game, they hand you the most powerful sniper in the entire game, with every single attachment that isn't a suppressor, and you j I just ended up rolling with it until the end credits. Take it from me, don't bother to loot people. <laughs> Suppressors aren't even wholly silent anymore so they're largely unimpactful on anything that's not a sniper rifle. It was incredibly jarring towards the end when I was flicking through my three guns and realized that I had stolen every single one of them off corpses, which meant that all the corpse looting that I had done up until that point was totally pointless. Like, early on I bought this MP5, right? I put a scope and a suppressor on it and thought I was the top of the world. In reality, I could have been equally as effective by just grabbing an AK off the floor and using it for the first 10 hours. The shotgun you end up finding by your, like, third camp is also about as powerful as an AWP for some reason. Though all the weapons have been rebalanced, there are still some you just shouldn't touch under any circumstances. I bought the Deagle. Don't make the same mistake. Don't buy the Deagle. It's a complete waste of time. Okay, nearly murdered an innocent man. Wouldn't be the first time. Money being largely worthless is a realization I had unfortunately late in my playthrough. I did all of these things that are in retrospect completely pointless, like killing the occasional ally for their money, hunting for spare money in caves, and most unforgivably, intentionally letting the enemy radio for reinforcements at outposts so I had more people to loot. I did this so ubiquitously, and it was all for no reason. Don't be like me, it wasted an unreasonable amount of time, and I didn't even end up using any of it because the ground weapons were better anyway. Oh yeah, the plot. Before settling on this video's format, I was originally intending to cover the entire game's plot and touch on every single story beat, but that's way less about Ziggy's mod and way more about Far Cry 3. Despite the fact that I have pretty much every single cutscene in the game recorded, I'm gonna try to keep it brief. There's definitely some padding in the main plot. Like, Buck should have been cut completely, seriously, I hate this guy. Dude was probably the first gay character I'd ever seen in any media, and so of course he's a sociopathic rapist. None of his missions really amount to anything either, you just sort of go on three really overly long treasure hunts to get a knife that you stab him with. Does this joke even translate? 
I don't know about that, Jason. There was circulated US currency in that box over there. Apart from Buck, I think Willis's mission's going a little bit too long, though I did get to have this moment. What am I playing right now? Wow, they're really not subtle about this, are they? And lastly, for the plot, I don't think you spend enough time on the second island. Specifically with Sam. I love him, and it's criminal how he gets japed. You kill every antagonist via quick time events because this game was made in 2012. Surprisingly, I don't actually have a problem with killing the villains via quick time events. It's even used for this cool moment in the last mission where after you kill Hoyt, you come to and realize you murdered all these people. What I do have a problem with is why Hoyt didn't die significantly earlier into the game. Like, right here, I have a sniper rifle, clear line of fire, he's obviously in view, not moving, and then it cuts to gameplay and he's just gone. Or like earlier, when I'm in his office and he's trying to intimidate me, like, why why don't I kill him right here? There's no guards in the room, just, just, like, just stab him. People disappearing right after cutscenes is also extremely jarring. It happens after practically every mission, so I can't show you all of them, but it's a really weird choice. It's not even consistent either. Like here, Sam is still there after the mission is over, but other times it's just, like... It looks so egregious. Lastly, the weapon balance changes kind of completely ruin all the action set pieces. Pretty much any time you're forced to sit in one place on an HMG, you're gonna have to play it over and over again until you get lucky. Or, in this mission's case, disregard it completely after dying one too many times and jankly fighting from some house nearby. In actual gameplay, the HMGs are certainly... St strong. Heavy weapons in this game must be loaded with HG rounds, because they make all vehicles explode in like, the first 10 rounds. Look, Sam, I've wielded that gun. If you fired at us, we'd be dead in the first 13 shots. Ah, uh, look at that. I managed to make a whole Far Cry video without even bringing up any of the batshit dream sequences. Uh, b basically every sequence with Citra sucks, and make sure to kill her at the end. I have no idea how to end this video. Thanks again to Luke, Emily, and Clary. Give me money to get your name here.